Welcome to episode number... Something. Something. Season number... It doesn't matter. Four of the What Are Jam <laughs> cast. cast. Today, we are going to talk about start. some problems. We've, been, we've just been like brainstorming, you know? <laughs> yeah. We sat we down. We talked about so many things. I showed producer Michael. We are starting YouTube this videos. recording one hour and 50 minutes after it's scheduled to start. I'm proud of us. I am too. That's persistence. A lot of people would have given up by now. We don't. We wouldn't have. So we kept. Our, I kept myself busy. Producer Michael kept himself busy while you were We've working been, on a client thing. Yeah, and it was real. We've been sampling some of a client gift. Yeah, we're drinking a friend, but past coaching client. True. Who upgraded herself into friend status? True. Is now brings us bourbon when we are helpful to her <laughs> which is the best i know if we can just retire and people just bring us delicious seriously things, then yeah we don't even need money because we, we just buy that stuff with yeah. the money anyways true um so thank you brandy for bringing us russell's reserve kentucky straight bourbon whiskey it is delicious i had to start drinking water because like adam mentioned we are starting over an hour later and i had already been drinking it been sipping a little bit more aggressively than yeah planned it's great though it is great brandy has a new book out she does called the mist of being human it's pretty I started dope it. yeah i started reading it love it um it's good stuff it's about mindfulness and yeah. gratitude and a lot of good i'm excited for it. check it out um so what's the pro- what's today the we're problem? talking about some problems yeah what's and the today's problem? problem is the problem of running your own business Mm-hmm. Being a small business, maybe you're a one person business or a small, yeah, a couple people, and figuring out how do you delegate, what mm-hmm. things do you do on your own, true, and figuring all of that out. Yes. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And yeah, I think like delegation and some people come into our space to meet and they want to delegate a lot of it. Right. Um, and to me, there's a difference between like straight up like hiring people like, Oh, I'm going to hire someone to do something that I don't know how to do. And then there's like another level of, I can do this thing. It's, it's learnable, yeah. but I don't want it. Learnable. Do it. Right. There's an article that I read repeatedly that reminds me of this and it's by, Have you shared it with me. Maybe mm. that is by, I feel like I've mentioned him before. Really? It's Ramit Seti. Oh, I've, yeah. I've, and he talks about being where this. you're, he talks about delegating and um, the three ways he thinks of it are where am I value added, meaning where do I make things better? Mm-hmm. Where am I neutral? Uh, meaning if I do a set task or you do a task, it's the same. Yeah. It doesn't matter who does it. it and then where am it. I value um, negative where am I making things worse because I'm doing them yeah um, you help me and maybe better. it's because of this article but you've helped me think through this a few times where you will say what are things that you always want to do what are things that you are like neutral about and what right. are things that you hate doing or um, even like I remember working with Mike Albert our financial coach consultant helper and he was talking about He was helping me figure out the profitability of a cookbook shoot. And he was like, if you want to make this much an hour, then it makes total sense to hire this person to do the thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just hard to not think of it as cash out. Like, oh, I'm just like spending money. Spending money. money. Yeah. So. And that was when we started to outsource, uh, bring in chefs or other people to help cook the food rather than you cook the food and everything. So, um, but yeah, it was, it's a little scary to start doing that. I remember Mm -hmm. when we, you know, we started where we did everything mm-hmm. and then we started with uh, you and I and some interns doing everything mm-hmm. and then you and I and some part-time team members working on cookbooks Yeah, and then getting to, oh, we're going to go have professionals work on this. Yeah. And they were able to actually make it better where they were For like, sure. you're not going to be able to find this ingredient. I can find it. Right. And you can't order this. It's not available here. A lot of things that used to take us remember we had producer Michael looking for obscure ingredients being like, you might have to go drive to three places and yeah. we don't know how to do it. Instead of just and a professional would be like, knows. go yeah. do this. Right. Um, way faster, way better. Mm-hmm. Save so much time, yeah. energy, stress. But I would say if maybe you agree that the connecting factor, connecting factor, 
Sure. I don't, I don't know what you're saying, so it's hard for me to... Does that make sense? No, that's all I have to say about it, <laughs> um, is that we tried it first. Right. And yeah. some, I guess the, the reason why we bring up this subject is some people come in and they've not even really attempted yeah, to right. do it themselves. Right. And they are like, I kind of just want someone else to do it. And I don't know if that's always the best route. Well, I would say one of two things. I sat with a person and we were talking about delegating. We're going through this whole conversation and it came pretty quickly that somebody was stuck between they didn't know how to do it themselves. So you can't, if you don't know how to do something, you can't hire somebody for a lower amount of money if you can't teach mm-hmm. them and mm-hmm. delegate and tell them what to do. Yeah. You'd have to hire someone. You have to hire somebody who's more professional level. so they can show up and tell you what to do or just do it for you the way that you think that you think you want to done. Mm-hmm. The other thing that happens is sometimes people get into a control mode where mm-hmm. you're like, I actually care how this is done, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And I don't want to learn how to do it. And you become a little bit of a dictator in that scenario yeah. where you're like, um, I don't know who can do this. I don't know how it's done, but I, I want to have a lot of opinions about it. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to be, for a lot of people who have tiny businesses, I tell them to start with interns mm-hmm. um, because it, it points out how horrible you are at managing mm-hmm. and delegating right. very quickly. And it's a short term thing, so it doesn't. It's not a problem. True. And I, I think back to, we've had wonderful interns mm-hmm. um, across the board. We've gotten better, like each round of interns who have right. come through here. Um, and you got to know how you are as a boss or a dictator. I mean, not a real dictator, but dictating tasks. Uh, yeah. Um, like there was the other day, someone came in to like adhere a piece of wood to another wood and producer Michael was like yeah they came in and they were like oh do you know if Allie wants me to use nails or, use screws. Nails or screws and Michael's like I, she doesn't care I know for a fact that yeah. she doesn't care and I would say like you I've even learned being in charge of other people's tasks being a boss whatever you want to call it yeah I know exactly when I'm like I like do not care yeah you know and you learn to f- figure out like oh she will have an opinion about Mm -hmm. this and she won't have an opinion. Yeah. Or Uh, you could see, you know, having people who are very unable to move forward um, because they're afraid that you will care. Like you need to have people who just trust that they know your preferences and how things work. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think that this whole, this whole conversation is really interesting because, um, you know, like we get into conversations with small business owners who are starting out they're they're really at the beginning stages of their business and you know they might not want to do the business stuff how would you what would you say to someone like that like the biz, like the math yeah like harder like paying bills or like or, yeah bookkeeping. QuickBooks, yeah or um i don't know probably like contracts and stuff like that like can you be well, a so business we were owner? that those people for three years <laughs> yeah right and what we did was stupid but this is what we did mm-hmm. to figure out that we were stupid. But mm-hmm. it took us getting to a place. We tried to hire other people to do things for us. That we didn't really that we know didn't, how to do. And that we didn't... I think we just wanted to not have bosses when we started. Mm-hmm. Like that was like the... If someone's like, hey, what did you? why did you start this thing? You're like, yeah. we wanted to dictate our own time, who we worked with, all of that stuff. Right. And if someone was like, well, tell me about what you want that to be, we would have had a hard time telling you what that was. Mm-hmm. We just knew it wasn't working Someone some other places. Yeah, thing. Yeah. And so I think we started there. We asked a bunch of people to do things for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just didn't work. We weren't making money. Or we'd get into these things. We're like, why do we keep having a ton of money and then going to zero? Like, yeah. what's why do I have $12,000 in my account and now I have $0? And like, I don't understand. Where to go what's going on yeah. or would you, some of those things you're like, this is just, I don't understand why this isn't working. Mm-hmm. And w- we would just get into this mode where when we didn't understand what was going on, we would just start working twice as much yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Or we would start, um, we would just pay somebody a lot of money to like tell us what to do, but also not listen to them really. Right. Because we wanted to do things our way. Right. So a lot of people would be like, Oh, you should try this or this or this. Mm-hmm. And we'd be like, yeah, we're just doing things a little differently. 
there's just it, the math has to work yeah or it doesn't yeah it, it's not a business yeah and i think it's um a lot of the not that you want to be on the defense but i think a lot of these quote business things that a lot of people don't want to do whether it's like manage their own facebook account for their business or respond to emails write proposals stock inventory like those things I think dictate how you where you take your business. Yeah. So if I am um, a freelance designer and I hate writing contracts and signing my own clients, I as a freelancer could just get two to three retainer clients and just sign a year contract and then yeah. not have to deal with that. Like I think that can affect it's not necessarily like we'll get over it. You need to write contracts every day, but you can for sure hire a lawyer to write them, but then decide this is the way that I want to um, structure my business right. to avoid something that I hate. Yeah, you know? I think, yeah, so much of that is just an important thing that it's easier. It, you've never learned to do that. They don't teach you that in school. Even if you go to f- photography school, they're not teaching you. They're teaching you other stuff. Yeah. And so I think running your own stuff is a, just a series of learning things. And there's not you don't learn things unless you learn them. Yeah. So if you go to a lecture in college and you listen to one lecture, you might remember some sound bites, Mm -hmm. but you don't, it doesn't change the way you live your life. Right. You need to change. You need to change. You have to have experiences and you have to figure out like, Oh, this doesn't work. This does work. This, this creates problems. You you just don't know any of those things. Yeah. We, what would you tell somebody? Let's say if they were like, Oh, I want to sell a product online, Mm -hmm. but they, didn't want to learn how to handle shipping on their own, or they didn't want to learn how to get into Shopify mm-hmm. and like adjust the weights so that their shipping is mm-hmm. profitable or so it makes sense. Yeah. I would say don't start that business then. Don't start that or business. Or find someone else who you can pay in equity or you can split like ownership, not completely, but you know, split it somehow and give that person the opportunity to do something that they're good at. Yeah. Um, because that is sometimes someone's thing. Like right. running the business is very much a skill set that someone seeks. Right. To use. We've watched people who have a million dollar a year online business mm-hmm. be stingy about hiring people to operate their million dollar a year online business. Yeah. Um, and w- miss out on a lot. Yeah. And we've watched people who just start, I mean, it's kind of a, with Shopify, you can like click six buttons and have a store set up. And so we watch a lot of people be like, Oh, this part's annoying. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And you're like, you're then don't, then don't exist. Or look at the, why do you want to have a shop? Like talk, if it's not running the shop, then what's the thing that you want to do? And can you find a job or a career or a business that you could start that has that. So if you don't want to create an online store, you know, there's a lot of tiny businesses that have like a physical location and they carry small selection or of show goods. Or shop at pop-up shops yeah. or like farmer's markets or whatever. For but sure. it's just this. You still if, need to shop. But market. when people see, yeah, right. If people, there are things that are headaches, like there are hurdles to get over to just start doing the thing that you dreamed of doing. Yeah. And it, you have to do those things. And if you don't, the longer you wait to not do them, the on, the more you're delaying that all working out. Right. Or if you can't find people to help you. And so I think there's a there's this real delegation comes back to just being really clear about what things do you need to be doing, what mm-hmm. things do you need to learn. Um I took over I took over more of our bookkeeping from our bookkeepers. Mm-hmm. Like our, our bookkeepers will be like, Oh hey, I can do like this, this, and this. I'm like, nah, I'm good because not because I'm better yeah. or whatever, but I a year from now I want to be like a super wizard about our numbers and I'm just gonna live in them every day. Yeah. I don't want someone to do it for me. I would like if someone looks at my thing and says, That's how you do all of that. Right. Give you um, that initial guidance or correction. Yeah, yeah. but I want to learn all of it. I want that right. to become like embedded into my knowledge. So I'm yeah. not going to delegate that. Um, Producer Michael was working through putting together a podcast. And I was mm-hmm. like, you can learn all of this. I promise I will never learn it. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to get that knowledge as part of right. what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, so I think it's being intentional. It's saying what elements of your business are crucial for me to understand as the owner. And if 
you know, a decent amount of your work you're going to hate, you have the opportunity at this moment that you're listening, deciding to back out or to change or to shift or evolve. Yeah. Which is great. And you can be creative in how you do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I think it's good to not always be super connected to your competition, but it's awesome to look at how other people have decided to run their business, what their roles are. Yeah. Um, do they have partners? Cause when you're doing it all by yourself, you kind of just need to it's crazy learn town. how to do it all by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's been an interesting conversation in delegation. I think I want to hear from one of our diamond members. Hello. Hey, it's producer Michael. I have a quick question for you. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey, I was wondering if you could introduce yourself to our listeners and then tell me a little bit about what the Diamond membership has been like for you. My name is Jennifer Fault, and honestly, I do a lot of things, but mostly I provide creative communication solutions for women who own small businesses. The Diamond membership is a great extension of the coaching I did with Adam in 2017. A lot of business memberships, masterminds, or networking groups are either spammy and gross or fake and rah-rah, neither of which I need in my life, um, which is why I typically don't join them. But the Diamond membership provides genuine encouragement, honest feedback, and authentic community. I can ask stupid questions and people will give me answers and tell me that I'm asking stupid questions, both of which are super useful. Are you ready to add more gold to the gold? Let's do it. Let's put ready to gild the lily. Gild the lily. What? uh, What's extra? What's the most? What's what's so much? Well, I mean, this is inspired by um, the Met Gala, which is tomorrow. Oh heck yeah! And Rihanna, of course. I just watched Rihanna's Vogue. I was inspired by this video that you're about to talk about just now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Vogue did, I mean, they like featured her and an art, obviously all the like regular stuff, but they did a video with her getting ready, doing her makeup with obviously Fenty Beauty. But um, she has, what is it, body lava? She has this like, basically it makes your skin like glow and it's like beautiful and she looks great in it. But she also sells these like poofs filled with glitter that you can like basically like bop on yourself. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Is that a term? Yeah. Um, it's very extra and it's completely like everyone that I've seen review it is like, this is a collector's piece. Like, yeah, it works and it's beautiful, but like, you don't I need, need to, to be doing that all this. the time. Yeah. yeah. I'm obviously like going to buy it, but yeah. yeah. Very cool. I have been really impressed by the sun lately. Oh yeah. We've had a lot of, um, so the last clouds. couple of days, yeah. um, we, you and I have sat outside for like mm-hmm. all of the time is when the weather changed from as like 30 to <laughs> 48, you and I were sitting outside on our back patio. Even when it was cold, so. it was still cold. 48 is not warm. No. If people who listen to this in California are like, that's like winter weather. Yeah. And, but the sun was out and we were, I put plants out yeah. too, early. too early. They had frosted yeah. overnight, killed some of them, but they, they, the important they thing died in die. service yeah. to, our excitement yeah. of the sun. Yeah. So we're thankful for it. It is good. It I got to make sad, sure though, to put some those plants survived indoors yeah, all winter. They really and did. then we like and prematurely like, put them out. But it's, it's the nature's it's way. True. It's well, and I almost way. feel like the sun is also inspired by my like desire to buy body lava. Like it's kind of connected. I, no one wants to wear that. I outdoor. feel like the sun's <laughs> covered with lava kind of, and it's yeah. just like glowing. Yeah. That actually is scientifically true. Welcome to, and Science thank you for Science. participating in, gilding the lily and thank you for listening peace